You see, okay, row number 28, column number 4. So that gives me some indication. Ah, here it is. So let me get rid of this. That should fix it. And done. Perfect. Okay, so now we have created this standalone organization, called XYZ Motor Sales Right. But ideally, this should have been part of the hierarchy, isn't it? This should have been part of the XYZ Motors hierarchy. Now, is there a way I can include it as part of the hierarchy? Maybe if we identify the parent, if we can assign a parent to this organization, so it will be part of the hierarchy right. As of now, does it have any superior or subordinate? You see, this area is empty. It doesn't have any superior or subordinate. So what we can do is we can say, hey, don't worry, we can assign a superior to you. So how to do that? Related actions. And then reorganization assign superior right. Let's take that option. So which organization would be the superior of XYZ Motor Sales? The executive. Executive correct. So let's search for executive. So it says, okay, what is the superior? So let's search for it. So maybe you created them one after the other, without creating a subordinate relationship. So you create your individual supervisory organizations. And then, after you create all of them, then maybe you want to. Yeah, you can place them as part of the hierarchical structure. So then you can assign a superior. So you can say, superior assigned right. Superior organization assigned. Okay. So it says it has now completed the process. If I go to the XYZ Motor Sales Organization now, you would see that it has already assigned a superior organization, that is XYZ Motors Executive. And the top level organization is XYZ Motors. So now, if I want to look at the hierarchy of XYZ Motors, I will go to the related actions. You see, I want to see the hierarchy structure of XYZ Motors. I will go to the related actions of XYZ Motors Supervisory Organization. And then I will scroll down and navigate hierarchy. Okay. Let's see what we have here. So 1001 XYZ Motors, then 1002 XYZ Motors. Executive. Previously we had only one subordinate. Now let's see what has happened. I will click on the drill down. And we have two subordinates. XYZ Motors Manufacturing. XYZ Motors Sales. Correct. So our organization structure looks correct, right? As per what we did yesterday. So this is our organization structure. Here, we did two things. First is we created the top-level organization, and then we created subordinates. Right, we created the first subordinate, that is XYZ Motors Executive. Then from XYZ Motors Executive, we created one more subordinate, that is XYZ Motors Manufacturing. Correct. And then we had three organizations in the structure. And then, how did we do the XYZ Motors sales? We created that as a standalone. And then we included that as part of the hierarchy, by assigning a superior. Okay. That's how we did. Now this is.
I just showed you two different ways of creating the organization structure. One is, we create top-down. And another one I showed you was how to include an organization into an existing hierarchy. Right. You can choose either of the approaches. You can use a mix of these approaches as well. Perfectly fine. Whichever is more convenient. Whichever is more suitable for the task that you are doing. If there is an existing organization, you just want to create a subordinate. You know it go to related actions. Reorganization creates a body mate right. Easy. You have to fill up less things right, because a lot of the options, a lot of the parameters are inherited from the superior organization anyway. Right, it's much more easier, rather than creating a supervisory organization, using the task. Now, what is the task? To create a supervisory organization? Create support. Create support. Yeah, create support will also work. Now remember there is a space between soup and org. So do not just type it together, because then it will not work, okay? So when you say, create support, yes, that is fine. But remember there is a space between soup and org. So it is two different words. All right. Yes. And also, you will see that when we hire workers, when we, when we will go, maybe mid of next week or maybe end of beginning of next week, we will start hiring some workers. Even when we hire workers. For each of the workers, we have to specify their own location. The location at which those workers are getting hired. This primary location will not play any role in the hiring of workers. This is just a placeholder. It's kind of illogical. Like a data which shows where is this particular department or organization located. Right. Logical home of the organization. That's it. Typically, we use it as the location of the manager. Right. Typically, unless there is this physical presence like, okay, our, let's say, the one-day department is in Gurgaon. Okay, so if that is the case, then whenever we create the one-day department, we will select the location as Gurgaon, because maybe most of our people are there. Right. So maybe we can say that, yeah, that's the location. I mean in traditional offices. You have a location of that department. And then you have the signage saying that, yeah, sales department. Maybe at the entry you see a huge signboard saying, yeah, that particular department. Remember college. When we went to colleges and outside departments, they had this big signage saying that, okay, in computer science department, history department, geography department, something like that. So that is the physical location of that particular department. Right. So you know that makes sense. But nowadays, with distributed offices and global companies, it is difficult to envisage like such a situation. Because we say, yeah, well, I am in the world department and I am in Bangalore. And let's say you are in the same department, but you are in New York, right? So how does the location matter? But typically still, we would still like to have a logical home of the department. If you don't have a physical location, enter the location of the manager. But apart from that, it doesn't play any other, any other role. So in this COVID times, most of the people are working remotely. So now even new hirings happened with remote locations. 
So now a lot of organizations have started creating locations which say New York Remote. Right. So it doesn't have any special address, it just says New York Remote. And all the people who are tagged to New York but working remotely will be assigned that particular location, let's say New York Remote. Things like this. Now, what is a reorganization? One more time. What is the reorganization? It's an event to the organizational structure. Yeah, correct. That's the whole definition. It's an event, but we do it to track changes made to the organizational structure. So if you are making your organizational structure changes with a particular effective date, yes, it is one reorg. If you are, if you are going to make more changes with a different effective date, create another reorg right. Don't put everything into one reorg if they are of different effective dates. It doesn't make sense. Different effective date, different set of organizational structural changes. Definitely a new reorg. There is no limit to the number of reorgs you have to create. Use it judiciously, do not just keep creating reorgs. But if it is for the same effective date, try to put them into one particular reorg. Okay, now let's look at the reorg that we had created. We have been using it. So let's go to Edit Reorg. Okay. And let's look at our reorg will work. Okay, let's look at C and see what happened to this reorganization. You see, I created organizations with it. Whenever I created this XYZ Motors, I had chosen this reorg. I created XYZ Motors sales. I chose this reorg. You see, it is now showing up by organization. Yes, we have created two reorganizations. So now I can track. Okay, what all happened? As part of this, we work reorganization. So I created this organizations. Right. And what is? Who created it? When was it created? What is the effective date? What is the reorganization date? I have all that information. And XYZ and XYZ. Executive. Yes, because those were created as subordinates of XYZ Motors. We just, we just used the reorganization tab, but we did not select our particular reorganization. That's the reason. It's a bit confusing, I know, but that's the way it is. So for those things we did not select it. We did not select this particular reorganization. So it did not appear here.